Hello everyone, my name is the Fox. In this video, we're going to talk about the Xbox handheld again. This is coming up because Jez Corden was on a podcast and he talked about uh, Microsoft in the prototyping stage of a handheld. He said that when he reached out about it, no one is debunking it. And further, this was covered by Insider Gaming, talking about Jez Corden, talking about this. Additionally, we have news from South Korea that is certifying Xbox something. No one knows what this is. People are speculating that initially this was going to be the Xbox Series X discless version, but this could also be the Xbox handheld prototype that is currently potentially in testing. So this particular video, we're going to be taking a look at how Xbox Series S CPU and GPU scale at different power, but we're taking a look at it as a performance target, meaning how low in power can we take a AMD's 8840U, which is Zen 4 N4 compared to Zen 2 N7, and how far can we take that down to match Zen 2? so that we can give a better idea very quickly and clearly of how much power is being taken on the CPU side. Then we're also going to take a look at GPU side and show you how memory starved we are on the GPU side on the latest AMD mobile platforms and why going to 256 bit wide memory matters a bunch, not just to feed higher clocks, but also that if we run at low power clocks, that matters a bunch for a handheld state more than most people actually understand or realize. And that's what I've been trying to tell everyone for years now. And it only just seems like just recently, everyone is starting to actually believe this is possible. So I'm going to go into a little bit quicker detail to show you why that's the case. Let's take a look at CPUs up first. In this particular part of the video, we're going to be taking a look at the CPU side of the APU. Now, what we have here is AMD's 4800U. You can see that right here. What's great about this is that this is a Zen 2 platform running on TSMC's 7 nanometer node. Very much similar to the Xbox Series S, the Xbox Series X, the Steam Deck, the PS5, the older versions of those. Obviously, the newer PS5 and the newer Steam Deck are on N6. However, those are all running different variations of Zen 2 cores. While we have a more full-fat Zen 2 core here, we can still get a really good understanding of how much power is required to hit 3.5 gigahertz on those cores. So we're going to go ahead and you can see I have this set to a max clock limit of 3.5 gigahertz. And I've also said EPP mode is zero. What that means to you is I've told the Windows power schema, Windows power mode to say, oh, you want all power to go to the CPU. So I am pushing as much power as I can to the CPU at all costs. Let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. And then we're gonna see what benchmark we can get when running this. So if I go ahead and stress the CPU, and right here, you can see that all of these are at 3.5 gigahertz, right? Because they're all 3.5 gigahertz for all core. This is pretty much where the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X are in different differing amounts, right? The Xbox Series X goes up to 3.6 gigahertz. Xbox Series S goes up to 3.4 gigahertz. So I'm basically going here. And what do we get when we take a look at this from a package power standpoint? 32 watts. That's how much power eight cores of Zen 2 on N7 requires to hit 3.5 gigahertz. So more or less, we can know that the Series S requires about 30 watts of power just for the CPU side alone. And if we take a look at what type of performance we get out of that, if I go ahead and bench the CPU, we're going to see what types of result I get here. 4392, like I got before. Now, I've already benched this before. So if you go here, 4396 is what I got before. And you can see on Cinebench R23, our multi-core score, which I've already done here, is 8,636 points. Now, why that matters is this requires between 28 and 32 watts, generally speaking, for the Xbox Series S. And this is going to be the performance target for what we need to hit on other types of CPUs and other types of frequencies. Now, I'm kind of already burying the lead here because you can see that Zen 4 3 gigahertz is basically what we need to hit the same type of performance target, but we're using substantially less power. Now this is going to go further when we think about Zen 5 and Zen 5C, but this is what it looks like right now. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to AMD's 8840U platform so you can see what that looks like. All right, now here we are taking a look at AMD's 8840U, and you can see that's right here, but you can also see it in CPU-Z with Hawk Point. We can see that we are running on their four, TSMC's 4 nanometer platform. So this is AMD's 8840U Zen 4 on N4. So this is considerably better, and you can see that I've gone ahead and already capped this at 3 gigahertz, and I've set EPP mode to zero. So we have a very, very consistent approach to how we're actually benchmarking these two platforms. And if I go into the benchmark here, and if I just go ahead and stress this, right, just so you can, I can validate with you that this is what it is. If we take a look at my CPU, my CPU cores, just like I could do on Zen 2, and 
cap the frequency at whatever I please, you can see that all of these are at three gigahertz indeed. But when we take a look at how much power that's taking, it's only taking 16 watts to run at three gigahertz. And if we go ahead and bench the CPU, let me go ahead and update this because that is 4470 instead of 4400. So we're doing uh, very, we're doing marginally better on multi-threaded score. However, again, let's go ahead and stress this again. So you can see that our score we got was 4470 when I benched it. However, take a look at our CPU package power, uh, 17 watt, 16.2 watt. That's how much power the 8840U is consuming to get this same multi-threaded score. So in effect, I am using almost half the amount of power, half of the power, while still having eight cores. So I'm still doing three gigahertz all core, but I'm getting the same performance that I got on Zen 2 and 7. That's on Zen 4 and 4 today, not on Zen 5 and Zen 5C on N3. So this is where we are still able to go. We're still able to extract even more. And especially when we think about Zen 5C types of cores where we can get even better performance with lower power, with better power efficiency, just because of the caches are going to be different. That is also going to be very interesting. And we'll be able to bring down the CPU side of how much power is required down there even further. But this is just to give you an idea. And I've already gone ahead and run Cinebench on here just so you can see it at three gigahertz. I get a score of 10683. Now that is very low for 8840U because 8840U can go way, way higher in terms of CPU clock speeds. But when I cap it at three gigahertz, that's the score that I get, which is way better than the Zen 2 N7 at 3.5 gigahertz. And again, I'm only taking 18 watts to run that. Just so you can see, I'll go ahead and stop this test and I'll redo the Cinebench one. So I'll do the multi-core. Let's jump into Hardware info, just to validate that this is going to be running 3 gigahertz on all core. So you can see all of those running. We have 3 gigahertz here. And if we go to CPU package power, right there, we have 18.5 watts. That's what it's taking. So a difference between 32 watt on uh, Zen 2 N7, and we're taking 18.5 watt on Zen 4 N4. This is huge, okay? That's a gigantic leap. And going further on that, the prototype handheld that Microsoft would be having right now would be a variation of Zen 5 that is running on N3 potentially that is going to be far better than what this is, especially with the Zen 5C. It might be two Zen 5 full fat cores and six Zen 5C cores. At that point, we can have some arrangement where we're ha have an even smaller power budget if we can get CPU down to about 8 to 10 watt, we're golden. We can easily match CPU speeds, even in a handheld state, for high frame rate and whatever, to accommodate whatever Series S pr profiles have already been made for all the games that have already come out. The next question that we have to tackle is GPU. So let's start answering that. The next part of this video, we're going to be taking a look at the GPU side of the APU. Now, the game that I'm running here is Returnal, and I am still using AMD's 8840U. The GPU of that is the AMD 780M. It is an RDNA 3 part, but for all intents and purposes, it really doesn't help us all that much over RDNA 2, and we are massively memory constrained. So I want to show you a few different things here. Uh, first, you can see our CPU package power is around uh, 28 watt right now, and you can see our CPU clocks are fluctuating between uh, 1.2 gigahertz and it'll ping pong up to like 2.8 gigahertz so that's the cpu side so what i'm going to do for you is i'm just going to go ahead and limit my cpu clock speeds to 1.2 gigahertz and just so you can see what that actually does to my frame rate so if i go back here you can see there are no longer ping ponging all over the place they are in fact locked to 1.2 gigahertz and you take a look at our cpu package power nothing really changed we just are using most all of our power to the gpu and we're still getting effectively the same frame rate around 42 fps average so let's start clocking the gpu and see how far i can take the gpu down all right so Currently, we're at about 2.5 gigahertz on the GPU. Let's go to 2.2 gigahertz. All right, so I changed the GPU to 2.2 gigahertz, and you can see right above, right up there, that it is now at 2.2 gigahertz. Let's see what changed on our FPS. We just dropped six watts of power. We're down to 22 watts now. Uh, we're still effectively at 42 FPS average. It's pretty much the same as it was before. Still looking at the same scene. Nothing really has changed. We just dropped six watts. 
uh, and drop the GPU clocks and nothing really changed. This is basically to show you that we can push a lot of power to the GPU and get nothing out of it effectively. And the main reason that we're getting nothing out of it is because the, there's not enough memory to go to it. So we're just pushing a bunch of power. Mind you, the 2.7 gigahertz is a default clock for the 8840U and also the 7840U, but we can push those clocks for no particular purpose whatsoever, which is why we shouldn't be going that far anyway. And why for the Xbox handheld, we should really be looking at a minimum of 256 big wide memory controller on that device because with the latest LPDDR5 or LPDDR6 we'll be able to extract better performance by pushing those clocks that are already present on current handhelds right now like the 8840U. Let's go ahead and drop down the GPU clock a bit more and see what happens. All right above there you can see that my GPU clock is now at 2 gigahertz. Our power went down to about 19.3 watt, 18 watt, 16.5. Let's go ahead and jump in here. So we've lost another 3 watts and we're still at 41 FPS. Still pretty similar. We just dropped 10 watts and there has been no discernible difference to our frame rate. So this is just to kind of show you that uh, a Series S handheld doesn't need to be running at full clocks that the Series S is capable of. Even though the Series S can take up to 75 watts, it's not needed at all times. Uh, and when we get really down to brass tacks, when we were trying to push GPU, we really need more memory bandwidth. And the amount of GPU clock that we have on the latest handhelds is kind of superfluous. Uh, and when people talk about overclocking these things, they really aren't fully understanding the limits that we are presented with on a handheld platform. Let's go ahead and push it a little lower. Uh, let's do 1.6 gigahertz. This should start impacting us a bunch. All right, so our GPU is at 1.6 gigahertz. You see that above right there. Let's go back into here. The GPU, the Package power is now at 13.6, and sure enough, we just started losing uh, FPS. So we're at 38 FPS right about now. Yeah, we're averaging about 38 FPS, so we dropped, what, 4 or 5 FPS on average, uh, and we're using 15 watts less power than we were previously. 15 watts less power, we lost about 5 FPS. And right now, the CPU package power, the TDP of this device is at... 14 watts. I can show you what the total system power would, for this would be. So I'll just go ahead and unplug. And we're going to see what the total system power will be. So this is what we're going to get reported from the battery itself. So right now we're looking at 26 watts total to run the platform. This is to run the game. So if you had a 50 watt hour battery on an Xbox handheld, this would get you about two hours of battery life. Okay, A 50 watt hour battery is what's on the Steam Deck OLED. So what you're looking at right now uh, in this particular state with the GPU clock set, I forced them at and low power CPU. And that's today, right? That's using today. That's not even talking about the advances on Zen, uh, Zen 5, 5C, N3, uh, and actually an RDNA 3.5 or an RDNA 4 GPU. If we had that, we'd be able to get even lower on power. But if I go ahead and move around here, you can see that it's still very, very smooth. And I just saved 15 watts. I saved 15 watts by capping clocks how I wanted them. So you don't need all that power because as you saw, it was all wasted. 28 watts was just getting absolutely wasted for no particular reason. Uh, and you can see right here, we're using 25 watt total. So at 50 watt hour battery, you get you two hours of battery life, which I think is an accepted minimum battery life. Obviously, if you're playing indie games, it would get much, much better. But this is the type of reality that's possible with an Xbox Series S handheld type of device where we take an Xbox Series S profile and move it onto a handheld. And this is using last generation parts. So if you think of N3, TSMC's N3 node, Zen 5, Zen 5C, and also hopefully RDNA 4, RDNA 3.5 at worst, all of these advances are going to help really bring down that power and hit it, hit closer to a full Series S spec. And that's even in a handheld mode. We're not even talking about when you plug it in and dock it, when we can start upclocking everything, then you're going to be in an even better state. We even I haven't even talked about running the RAM at 400 megahertz at a wider bus. So right now I'm at 800 megahertz on my RAM, right? So if I'm at 800 megahertz, effectively, if I went to 400 megahertz, which is my low power state in my RAM, but I was at 256 bit wide, I would have the same memory bandwidth as I would on this platform, but I would be able to save platform because the memory controller that's running on die would be running at lower power. 
There's a lot to consider here, guys, that all of this is completely possible to run Series S games on a handheld. And I've been saying it for a year, and I hope that now that you've seen 8840U and knowing that next generation parts are even better, that this is starting to make a lot of sense. Just to wrap this all up into a bow for you guys, I hope I made it abundantly clear to you that taking a look at the Zen 2 and 7 side versus the Zen 4 and 4 side, that when we take a look at it from a performance target, we are using roughly half the power to get the same performance between those two platforms. So that's already a huge reduction. And that's not even using AMD's best stuff or a better node, right? We're on N4. We can go to N4e or we can go to N3. Now, either one of those would be better for us. So that's already a better situation. Just going to Zen 5, Zen 5C is already a better situation. And that'll give us better power reduction. But going into the GPU side of things, you, you saw that we are massively memory constrained and I could just start capping GPU clocks and nothing changes in terms of FPS on a very GPU bound game. And you can see that on a very GPU bound game, we don't even need all that much CPU to get the same frame rate, right? So if you're at lower frame rate, you don't need a bunch of CPU. So that should be abundantly clear to you guys that when we're running a series S profile game, that devs aren't going to need to do a bunch of work because they've already done the work. That is a series S profile game. Just keep on making Series S profile games and it'll run on a Series S and it'll run on the Xbox handheld. The good thing to note is that in a handheld state running at a sub-resolution, a lower resolution because the display would be 720p maximum, then when we dock it, you can actually go faster and better than a Series S. I hope all of this, when you take a look at it and say, oh man, if you just really manipulate clocks, you can actually still extract really good performance and have good battery life. I hope I've made that abundantly clear here so you guys had a very clear objective number to look at and see that what I've been seeing for almost five years now. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.